Next up in our series looking at the all-time greats of world football is a man that they called the Divine Ponytail. And no, it's not Darwin Nunez, nor is it Zlatan Ibrahimovic. The Divine Ponytail, in fact, belonged to the legendary Roberto Baggio, who was born on February the 18th, 1967. The football legend was born in a town called Caldogno in the Italian province of Vicenza. Baggio is undoubtedly one of the greatest forwards in his country's storied football history. But more than just being great and scoring goals, Baggio became an icon, a cult hero, for big moments, good and bad. He had a unique style and grace not replicated by many in the game, and certainly not by many who were as gifted as he was. Baggio was spectacularly good at football, and he was so good in particular from a dead ball that free kick computer games were created in his image and likeness. He was the main character. A playmaker of the finest order, the Italian could dribble, score and assist, and was widely regarded as one of the most special footballers of his whole generation. He was even voted fourth in the FIFA Player of the Century Awards in 1999. It all started out not as a divine ponytail, but more as a sloppy mullet. At home in Caldogno, Baggio was a star of his local youth side, and before he even became a teenager, he began racking up the goals and assists. He also continued to experiment with his hairstyle, but as a promising young talent, he would be recognized by a scout named Antonio Mora. He made the move to Vincenza youth team at age 13 for a fee in the region of just $250. At his new club, he would score a goal a game until at 15, he was promoted to the first team setup. At just 16 years of age, Roberto Baggio would make his professional football debut. His debut was in Serie C1 with Vincenza and his first goal soon followed. The quality of this kid was there for all to see. Baggio would go on to score 12 goals in 29 games in the 84-85 season with the club, helping propel them to promotion to Serie B. Despite a huge injury days before an imminent transfer to big boys of Serie A Fiorentina, Baggio got his golden move at the age of 18 and would recover from his injury at his new club. La Viola had lots of faith in Baggio and expected big things. You had to have a good reputation at that age to get injured and still get your dream signing. Baggio would go on to score 55 goals in 136 games for Fiorentina during a five-year spell at the club. In Baggio's first two years with the club, he suffered again with injuries and had very limited playing time. Nonetheless, he would appear a star of the league and marked his return to full fitness with a fantastic free kick against Diego Maradona's Napoli, a goal that proved vital for Fiorentina who clinged on to their place in the Serie A that season. In the 88-89 campaign, Baggio really began to shine. He scored 15 league goals and finally had a run of games without serious injury problems. The following season, Fiorentina would go all the way to the UEFA Cup final, but fall just short to Italian rivals Juventus. In the league that season, Baggio racked up 17 goals, trailing only Marco van Basten in the scoring chart. With this, he was named the best under-23 player in European competition and earned a big move to Juventus. Baggio would spend five years at Juve from 1990 to 1995, and in 1990 and 94, he would represent Italy at two iconic World Cups, the first at home in Italy and then later in the USA. Baggio scored key goals against England and Czechoslovakia at the 1990 tournament but Italy would fall to Argentina in the semi-finals. Come 1994, Baggio truly was a global superstar and Italy's World Cup hopes revolved around his brilliance and the idea that he was the man to lead the Azzurri to glory. He came so close but was yet so far away from lifting the biggest trophy in world football. Infamously, the Divine Ponytail would miss the decisive penalty in the shootout of the 1994 World Cup Final, handing the trophy to Brazil. After what would be the worst moment of anybody's career, Baggio fell to his knees in despair. Despite being one of the stars of the tournament and the 1993 World Footballer of the Year, in the most important of moments, it all went wrong for Baggio. 
with the missed spot kick that would haunt him forever and in a way romanticise the career of this romantic Italian footballer that had all the highs and one of the biggest lows. At club level with Juve, Baggio had cemented himself as the best player on the planet. He led them to the UEFA Cup in 1993 when he was named Ballon d'Or winner and then a league and cup double in 1995. Baggio became club captain and was scoring and assisting for fun, with the style and grace he became famous for. His killer instinct in front of goal always made his World Cup final miss seem so much more shocking. In 1995 there was a passing of the guard, a young Alessandro Del Piero made his way into the Juventus side and Roberto Baggio was moved on. He wasn't in manager Marcello Lippi's future plans. Baggio would find a new home with AC Milan, but injuries again hampered his career and he wasn't getting any younger. His minutes for club and country suffered and despite his powerful cult status, his powers did begin to wane on the pitch. His goal contributions still came, but the years went on and they were fewer and farther between. Baggio would play for Bologna, Inter and Brescia before bowing out finally in 2004 leaving a legacy as one of the most prominent and popular superstars in Italian football and perhaps the brightest talent of a generation. Baggio was an off-field icon too, for his quality on the field of course, but also off it for his bold style and cult-like status. He converted from Catholicism to Buddhism after an injury crisis. He wrote a popular autobiography, enjoyed hunting and opened various businesses. Baggio was an enigma and the media latched onto that. He became a global icon and his image stands out to this day. 643 career appearances later, a man who had been voted the best at his trade on the planet bowed out after what was a wonderful roller coaster ride of a career. Yes, he may be remembered by some for that fatal penalty miss, but for his free kicks, corners and charisma, he is revered by many and truly seen as one of the top talents that Italy or even world football has ever produced. Just look at some of these moments. Roberto Baggio rank for you amongst the all-time greats? Let us know in the comment section below.